Welcome to this week's episode of Video Workbench. And on today's episode, I show you how to make pine trees by hand in five easy steps. So, why don't we get to the video? You can buy different pine tree variations in most hobby stores that have either a diorama or train section. Some are very finely detailed and you will certainly pay for that extra finesse. But with a little time and effort, you can make your own pine trees and there are many ways to make them. This is one of the reasons why most modelers decide to take the challenge and try to do things themselves. There is no one way of doing things. That's the joy of it. Variation is the key to enjoying this hobby and the more the variations, the better. So, let's get started with this project. Here are the items used for this project. Florist ferns. The name says it all. These plants are mostly sold at florist shops. A grinding tool. A pair of scissors. White glue. Any brand will do. Glycerin, a preservation chemical. Dowels. The ones used in this video range from 17 centimeters to 30 centimeters tall and are about 8 millimeters in diameter. Any type of drilling tool. A mixture of brown paint. For this video, I used a pre-mixed liquid wood stain antique oak paint from the Home Decor series by Delta. And green spray paint. Any green of your choice, but a dark color is preferable. Separate the pieces of the florist ferns from the main branch by cutting several branches with a pair of scissors. I have roughly 6 to 16 branches on one tree. You can use as many as you want. As you can see, they are sparsely arranged. In my opinion, it stands out better and gives a sense of individualism. Take a spray can with the desired color you would like to use on your trees. Here, I am using a matte dark green color. Spray the ferns and let dry about a day. Using an ordinary pump action spray bottle that is used to water plants, spray a glycerin and water mixture onto the ferns that you have. Make sure that you've read the instructions on the bottle on how much glycerin you have to mix with water and spray a good amount on all the ferns. This will preserve the ferns as they are and prevent them from discolorization and from withering. Leave some areas uncovered so that when it does discolor, it will break up the monotony of the colors, making it stand out even more. If you don't have a pump action spray bottle handy, you can also use a bowl with the glycerin and water mixture in it. Dip the fern branches into it, not fully, just enough to get around 60 to 70% saturated. Place onto a piece of paper towel and let dry. Using a grinding instrument, grind the dowel at uneven intervals to give an unsmooth, rugged, distorted bark effect. You can even use a sharp cutting blade to cut out small dents into the bark. Make sure one end of the dowel is slightly pointed. This part would represent the top of the tree. Then, take your drill of choice and using a 0.7 millimeter or 0.8 millimeter drill bit, Drill holes in the dowel at various intervals and levels for the ferns to be inserted. It is more interesting if you make the dowels vary in height. A variation of 15 centimeters to 30 centimeters is fine. It'll add interest and individualism. When you're satisfied with the look of the trunk or dowel, then take a brown mixture of paint you decide on how dark you want the color of the bark to be and paint the dowel completely. I used an oak stain color made by Delta from Home Decor. 
they make different stain-like colors that match real life wood. When done, place a small amount of white glue on the end of the fern stem and insert it into the hole. To make sure you are satisfied with the look and position of each fern, view the tree at different angles until you are satisfied with the look. If you are not satisfied, then just remove them and place them into another hole. Touch up the areas where excess glue might have oozed out with your brown paint. You can go all out and actually paint the branch where the small fern's leaves are situated with brown paint to represent the bark of the branches itself, but that might be overdoing it. I painted some of the branches but left some the way they were. It's so small that hardly anyone would take notice of it. You'd really have to look closely. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Well, I hope that you enjoyed and learned the five easy steps to make your own homemade pine trees for dioramas or any type of model kit that you're building. I would also like to thank Charles King for being a good sport with wanting to share his knowledge on how to make pine trees with Video Workbench. show you how you can use used coffee grounds and recycle them to make terrain with for any diorama. So why don't we get to the video. When you are done with making a pot of coffee, what do you normally do with the used coffee grounds? Throw them away, right? Not so fast. I will show you how you can recycle used coffee grounds into natural and authentic looking terrain for your model kit dioramas. Take the used coffee grounds out of the coffee maker, still keeping them on the filter. Place the used grounds that are still on the filter on a plate. You can use a disposable plate if you wish. Spread the grounds around with either your fingers or some sort of utensil. Place under a heat lamp or for faster drying, place them in a microwave oven. But go only 20 seconds at a time and make sure to watch as to not cause a fire. If you don't have access to a heat lamp or a microwave oven, you can have the coffee grounds air dry, but prepare to wait quite a while. After a few minutes, spread around the coffee grounds that have dried and expose either the damp or wet grounds that are underneath. Once completely dry to the touch, you can place the grounds into a baggie for storage. Now on to the diorama. Get a bottle of white glue, a disposable brush, and any type of cup. Squeeze white glue onto the base. And using your disposable brush, paint the glue on the base, a section at a time. Fill your cup with the dry coffee grounds and pour. Once an area is covered, lightly pat the grounds into the glue. When you have a section covered to your liking and after the glue has dried, gently pound or tap one edge of the diorama base on your work table that is covered with newspaper or paper towels. Take the loose coffee grounds and pour them back into a cup. Now it's time to proceed to the next section. Add white glue, spread with your brush, Make sure the whole area is covered, add more coffee grounds, pat down into the glue. And once again, when the glue is dry, get rid of the excess grounds the same way that you did before, by lightly pounding or tapping the diorama base on your work table. The entire diorama is now covered in used coffee grounds, giving it a realistic dirt look. If you'd like to seal it, you can do so with any type of spray or brush on sealer. Results will vary from a very muddy to a dry look. Do some testing before sealing the actual base. And that's it. That's all it takes to recycle used coffee grounds for your diorama. And you can use any type of coffee ground. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is dry them out and figure out how you're going to use them. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Thank you for watching. 
Thank you for your support and model on.